Let's move on next to Metrofile. Metrofile, again, a well-known brand on the South African business landscape because these are the people that come to your offices in their little bantam bucky and take away all of the papers that you've been collecting if you're in the client-facing game and you're obliged to keep FICA and RICA and all sorts of documents like that, IDs and so on and so forth, forms, application. Remember, it's not just about paper retention and storage, though. They're increasingly active in the electronic scanning and data management line of business, which makes sense because in many instances the law now makes it possible for people to retain those electronic records provided they have the database management systems to retrieve them when required. Market cap 1.9 billion rand, price to earnings ratio 13.1, dividend yield 3.78%. Graham Wackrell's done a good job here and this company has soldiered on and done well considering what its past was. Do you want to describe that past for those people that weren't around back in the day? Yeah, th in the early part of last decade, Paul, this was part of a company called MGX, and mm -hmm. it, this was a, a bit of a flamboyance of operation. It had, a, it had a, an office in the shape of a, a boat out there in, in, uh, in Midrand there, yes. and I think the MD was a guy called Chris Hills, and uh, he, he went away and left the company, and uh, a guy called Ronnie Price was involved, I think, from a distance, mm. and uh, it all fell in a bit of a heap. So but a bunch of IT businesses back exactly in that dot-com yes. era going gangbusters, yes. and then it all came crashing that, down. Right. And in the rubble of MGX was this little gem called Metrofile, and you've, mm. uh, you've described it beautifully. Um, and since then, of course, the, the, re the reason for holding so much in the way of, of records has become even more acutely uh, important mm -hmm. because of, of, of regulatory requirements. Mm. Um, but it's interesting, as you also say, you know, um, it's not just paper, it's not just clutter. I mean, we've just moved now from Park Town to Santon, and this is a completely paperless environment. And mm -hmm. it's amazing how people, when they're told, when, they're, when you concentrate their minds, bang, you can't take this kind of paper. You, you, if you leave paper in your desk, these, these nice people who come and clean up, they take it off your desk for you, <laughs> and it's gone. So, you know, the, the, there's, there's a fantastic um, imperative to, mm. to, to keep it out of the way. So if you're going to be keeping it, it's going to have to be more and more in, in electronic format. And that's where Metrofile is, is very good as well. In regard to international expansion, they have bought a business which is in the same line of work in uh, the Middle East. I'm not sure which part of the Middle East exactly, Dubai, I think. Plus, they've expanded into other African regions like Zambia and so on, picking up those businesses. In addition to that, they have some kind of a business which is involved with leasing of space. So they don't necessarily, in all instances, own and manage everything. Sometimes they will lease space to a big corporate bank, for example, that then takes that on. So they've got these business expansion strategies going on. They had a great hike in the dividend with the recent results. I don't know. What's not to like? Change of management, could that be a concern? Yeah, look, I don't think so. Mm, I mean, I think they not. had a fire recently, and uh, that, that wasn't such a, such a big deal for them because they, they got all these backup things. You know, this is an integral part of a kind of business continuity mm. type of, of, of strategy. Uh, that every recovery Exactly, type this thing. type of thing. Yep. So every business has to follow. So you're right. I mean, it's, it, some people might regard it as being a bit boring. But well, it's, speaking it, of boring, the share chart does look a little bit saggy to the right yeah. there. I'm surprised yeah. it didn't get a bigger lift from the earnings-related hike. So it's perhaps gone out of the period where it was seen as a, a classic recovery story doing well, and now it's a bit of a sh show me, tell me kind of story going forward from here. Yeah. Look, I think all the dynamics are in place for this thing to keep on trundling along very, very nicely indeed. Mm. I mean, when I say trundling, it's not, it shouldn't be taken in any way as a pejorative sort of way at all. I think it's got the potential uh, in years to come to really have some, some very strong and, and sustainably strong mm. earnings growth. And it's got a solid shareholder base. I think the Mine Workers Investment Company has got a 35% stake. It's a well-liked, well-regarded operation. It's a predominantly black-owned company, yes. Okay, good. So what are we hot on this one too? I'm Give hot it on the this benefit one. of the yep, doubt? Definitely. Yep. Hot.